Statue Garden is snow covered and silent. The witch is nowhere in sight. There are only snowmen, as still as the statues that loom overhead. Just waiting. Well, now, isn't this something? Do my eyes deceive me? Or has a wizard from Ravenwood wandered into my garden? This is not a wizard garden, though. It's a statue garden, and my statues don't take kindly to tourists. Neither do I. Okay, now I can do a proper introduction. Hello, everybody. Bunny Maddie here, and welcome back to Polaris. So now, we are about to fight Baba Yaga, and as I mentioned in the last episode, I have decided to do a Q&A. Because, you know, I'm not going to speed up Baba Yaga's um, battle, because I feel like that's one of the most important battles in this storyline so i like probably a, f a f week in advance i've asked people to ask me questions and a couple of you guys are kind enough to ask me a couple of questions and i'm really thankful for that so with that being said we should get started i'm waiting for these people to join in okay so this question was asked um, like this was like this question was a common question to be asked. What was your favorite memory in Wizard 101? And that was a really tricky question to answer because it's really hard to like you know think back on the memories that I've had in the seven years that I've been playing this game. But I would have to say my favorite memory would be. Back when I was in eighth grade, when I was on spring break and um, Avalon came out, and I spent the entire like I spent the entire spring break just questing throughout all of Avalon with Kelsey Fireheart and Sean Redhammer, and that was a pretty that was a pretty good memory because you know I don't know it was just so much fun to do. And we were all together, and I don't know. I really, I really treasured, I really treasured that time, and it was fun because you know it was like questing into a new world with friends. And believe it or not, Avalon is one of my favorite worlds, so it kind of like you know adds into the stuff. So it was pretty tricky, and there are and there are a lot, a lot of favorite memories that I've had in Wizard One One, but my best, best one would have to be that because I really enjoyed it. I really did. And this guy just got turned into an egg. <laughs> That's really funny. He's excited to fight Baba Yaga. <laughs> as much as I am excited to keep answering your questions. I really love Q&As. Um, so, <laughs> that was really bad. Okay, so on to the next question that I have here. Um... What is your favorite Christmas memory since we are approaching Christmas? Uh, my favorite Christmas memory was when I was super, super, like, I was little, like, super little. And, like, you know, um, this was back before, like, you know, I had my own room and my parents were still together and whatnot. And Christmas Eve, I would, um, like, when I would go to bed, I would always close my door. And after a few minutes of just like laying in bed, I would hear um, like a bell ringing. And I knew, I knew that was Santa. And I would always fidget and I would get so excited because I'm just like, oh my god, Santa's here, Santa's here. So I remember this one, this one evening, this one Christmas Eve, where I was just like, okay, this is it, I'm going to go see Santa. So I tried to sneak, I tried to see if I could get a peek at Santa. But unfortunately, I couldn't because I was afraid, oh, he's going to know that, like, you know, that I saw him and I don't want to get in trouble. So, like, you know, I kind of wussed out and I went back to bed. But after the ringing stopped, I, like, I snuck out of my room and I went to go look. And all of my presents were there. And, like, you know, the milk was, like, the milk was gone and so was the cookies. Um... We used to leave him Oreo cookies, and um, I was—I don't know—I was just so shocked because I'm just like that. Like, 
I was so shocked because I almost ran, I almost met Santa. And it was, it was a pretty daring experience for a six-year-old who's afraid of getting in trouble. <laughs> but it, I think that was one of my best Christmas memories. And, you know, it was just so much fun looking back, thinking, like, you know, a little girl hearing the, the like, Santa's bells ringing in, like, you know, my living room. And I get so excited and all that stuff. It was, it, I really cherish that moment as well. So, on to the next question. Let me see. W is this the Krusty Krab? No. This is Patrick. <laughs> I, um... Yeah, I have no explanation for that. <laughs> it was just based on a whim. And for the last question, I'm going to try to make this my lengthiest question of them all. Because, yeah. Um... What is your overall opinion on Polaris? My overall opinion... Oh, that's a, that's a little bit tricky because... Oh, yeah, that's pretty tricky because... The beginning is just so... stressed out... That, like, you know, sometimes... It, like... Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to pinpoint an honest and honest opinion on Polaris and the thing is is that like you know I'm pretty sure I could have finished Polaris within a few days but since I have decided to record this um like you know it's been I've had to like stretch it all out and like you know take my time with it and um and you know it I'm not gonna lie, it's a, it's a bit of a different experience than what I've been used to because like I said, this is the first time I've ever recorded myself um, questing into a world, so of course it's just gonna take longer, especially with the editing and whatnot. But my overall opinion on Polaris, I'm gonna try to see if I could conjure one up right now without spoiling anything. Um, my overall opinion. Huh. I would have to say that it's it's pretty it's pretty good. It is pretty good. I like the aesthetic appeal to it, and I also like the storyline to it. And I know where you guys are thinking, well, like you know, we're barely into like the interesting part of the storyline, but I have recorded everything beforehand. So I pretty much know what's going on in the storyline. And I really like the storyline. I just don't like the beginning. It's a little bit slow. But knowing KI, that's that has always been its pattern when it comes to worlds. The beginning is slow and later the end just gets really good. But yeah, I kinda like like I said, I like the I like the aesthetic appeal to it. I like the ending. I like how, like, you know, as you progress further, the more... The more interesting it gets. I like the dramatic effects that they have added to it. And what I mean by that, because, like, you know, I saw this on Twitter earlier. Um, that K I have worked, that KI has worked eight months on this world. So they can add more drama into the storyline. And more more like cutscenes, a little bit more animation when it comes to like the characters and the angles and whatnot. So I kind of like that too. And um I like the characters. I like the characters. And I think that's it. Like Polaris is overall a pretty gr pretty good world. I'm still trying to figure out whether it stands in my favorites or not. But so far, it's pretty good. Impressed. 
doesn't happen often. So, you want the old witch's counsel, do you? <laughs> I suppose I could spare a few minutes. Meet me back at my house and we can talk. Might not like what I have to say, though. <laughs> Might not. Oh, and just for the record, um... This battle wasn't... I'm pretty sure this battle was supposed to be longer, but considering that we had... since Considering that I had a pretty good... Um... Teammates in team up, I... We managed to get it done easily and only have to fight one statue, but normally it's all the statues that you have well, to fight now, if you're not fast are. enough. I'd say welcome to my humble home, but as you already know, you're really not welcome. <laughs> this is my daughter, Malori. Malori, this young wizard came all the way from Ravenwood. We actually met outside. What? Don't look at me that way. I've been taught not to trust strangers. I tried to warn you, at least. Well, wizard, you've gone to all this trouble to find me. What do you want? Hmm, yes. Bartleby sick, that is worrisome. Bartleby is ancient, older than the spiral, even older than the first world. Never heard of such a being falling ill, not in Polaris. Wait, is it the Auroracle old like that? Didn't you say you saw troubling signs in the sky? You said you were worried about her. Her temple isn't too far. Maybe the wizard should go and check on her. Or maybe she would know something at least. Such a smart girl. Doesn't know when to be discreet, but smart. Yes, there were signs the Oracle is in distress. It might be related. Hmm, getting to the Sunless Shrine won't be easy, but that's your problem. <laughs> go out the back and Malori can show you which way to go. Man, this witch is a little bit weird. I like Malori though. Listen, wizard, if you're going to see the Auroracle, I'm coming too. I've heard she can see the future, and I've got some questions. The witch told me about the Auroracle, but refused to take me. I asked why, and she said, because I said so. I'm not satisfied with that. So, this is the way. Once we get above the icefall, supposedly we just follow the river straight to the Sunless Shrine. Let's go. Okay, so, um, I am going to end the episode here. Like I said, for those who asked me questions, I am really thankful. Thank you for asking me questions. I really love answering your questions, and I really love doing Q&As. So, we will continue with the storyline in the next episode. If you like this video, um, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!